I wasn't always an actress. I, I'm not one of those that, like born to be a star. I, that's not my story. I'm a 26 year old South African actress. I was born in Cape Town. I was raised in East London, in the Eastern Cape. I come from a very strict, conservative family. Um, I'm a BK, a bishop's kid. So I basically was raised to be something bigger and better, in the words of every parent out there. I studied public relations management because I've always wanted to be in the media space. But then I dropped out of my third year, which my mom still wants to kill me for to this day, because, I don't know, it just, it felt like it wasn't enough for me. I, I've always wanted to be on the move. And when I started, I wanted to be a filmmaker, which I still want to be to this day. But when I moved to Johannesburg in 2013, I started out as a media assistant at a media monitoring company. And, you know, at the time, things seemed very bleak and it seemed like, you know, the whole filmmaker dream was not about to happen for me because I didn't really know anything or anyone in Johannesburg. After a year working as a media assistant, um, that's when an opportunity came and I entered a, an um, um, actor's amateur competition. Basically, it, my colleague, we placed a bet and she said, you, you are a star, enter this competition. And I said, no, because I don't like the, anything that's going to put me in the spotlight. And she said, okay, 200 bucks. If you make it, which I feel like you will, you owe me 200 bucks. If you don't, I owe you 200 bucks. I was like, easiest 200 bucks I'll ever make. And I sent through a clip because I worked nine to five, so I couldn't go to the actual venue to audition. So I took, I did a clip, and my nephew took the clip for me, and she was like, my, he was like six at the time, and it was, it was a mess. And I didn't care because I wasn't trying to get through, so I sent it through. And two weeks later, they called me and they're like, congratulations, you've been selected. I was like, I knew this was a sham of a competition because it looks horrible, it sounds even worse. How could I possibly make it? And I went through because that was a part of the bet. And I got there and there were so many people from all over the country. And you know, people took this seriously and I felt bad because I was just there for the money, you know? And I, uh, I, I did it nonetheless because I thought, okay, I need to push and, and not make it to, to get the money. And then I made it to the semi-finals. And then I made it to the finals. And then I won the whole thing. <laughs> and then, yeah, let's just say I ended up paying my colleague 200 bucks. So from the competition, I got to meet the likes of Shona Ferguson, um, Stumum Chadli, Nomza Mumbata, and Daryl Wood. Ultimately, when I won the competition, Sean Ferguson approached me and he said he was putting together a series, Ikaz, at the time, and he asked me to come and audition for him for the lead role of All Pums. I didn't get the role, but he was kind enough to allow me to shadow his artists on his set for about two weeks. And after two weeks, he, he thought, okay, let, let's, see, let's see what you've got, let's see what you've learned. And then he put me in, I think it was episode three, my very first ever TV job, and it was a sex scene. And yeah, I was literally like thrown in the in the <laughs> the jungle, and they were like, "Okay, survive." And I think that is when I had to, you know, make the decision of whether or not I wanted to continue with, you know, the career within the field of media or in, in the acting industry. Because now I had to do a sex scene, something that I was never trained for, something that I was never prepared for. And I did it. You know, I sit in my little corner and I asked myself, Sive, is this really something that you want to do? And I spoke to my mom and I told her and, and thankfully, and I'm blessed to have parents that have always supported me in everything that I do. My mom said, if you think you can do it, then do it, but this will determine if whether or not you can do the next project where you have to play um, a victim that's been raped or a, a 
not even a, a victim, the predator, you know. And I thought, okay, I have to make this decision. And I made it. And I did it. And after that, um, I got to meet the interns from Mnet Motion. And they were doing a, a short film, Locked in Pascope at the time. And they asked me to audition for the lead role. I auditioned. I got the part. And that was my first lead role in, uh, in, on TV. And that's when I met Kenneth Ngos, who saw something in me. I still don't know what it was, but he saw something in me and you know, he encouraged me and he, he, he sort of helped me you know, get in, inside. And he, 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 he said, he, he asked me questions about what it is that I wanted to do and what the dream was for me when I left home. And I had that conversation with him. And after that conversation, he made a call, only to find that he was speaking to Monin. And so after that, I met her and yeah, they signed me. The journey, it, it, it's harder every day. Um, the stakes are always so high, you know, because I don't know about everyone else, but for me, already I have so many insecurities in terms of I don't have the proper training, you know, and I'm just the girl from the Eastern Cape, man, you know, I, I don't know much. So I find myself in, in, in positions where I have to do research. I find myself in positions where I have to work hard in order to not just sell a story, but live it and, and you know, and, and, and give to people, present to people in a way that they can relate to whatever it is that I'm telling. Um, and, and so that's a challenge on its own. And then I have to leave Usi there at home and get on set and I have to be bullied, you know? And then that's another responsibility. So it, it's a challenge every day, whether it's an A story, whether it's, it's working with someone who's been in the industry for many, many years and who has made a name for themselves and then suddenly I have to you know, act alongside them and make sure that I'm seen and I'm not forgettable. So it's things, it's, it, it seems like little things, but it's those little things that sort of shape me as an artist and that scares me. So when I wake up in the morning and I, I know that I get to do what I love, at the end of the day, I know that that one thing that I love can be taken away from me, just like that.